Ahoy hoy everyone, it's Craig here at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, specifically at Kona Cafe. I'm here with Panda and Erica for this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. Before we get to that, I want to remind you this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get the support of one of the awesome Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, what brings us here to Kona Cafe today? Well, the reason we're here is because the restaurant recently reopened with a beautiful new interior. And it's also probably been a while since the last time that we've actually reviewed it. So we figured why the heck not? We were able to get a lunch reservation extremely easy. So we are here for it. And I can honestly say the interior of this place is absolutely beautiful now. Uh, it was pretty before, but I love the look and feel of it even more now, especially like with the, the amazing rock walls, which I guess are lava rock walls. What I'm trying to say is I have no idea what I'm talking about, but Erica actually knows all about what they did for the interior of this space. So I'm going to let her explain that. Okay, so we are here at Kona Cafe and there have been many changes. One of the most notable changes is behind me, we have these flowers on the wall and they are actually made to look like flowers you could find in the Polynesian Islands. And behind that is rock that's supposed to look like volcanic rock, which I thought was pretty cool. And that's actually my favorite part. And then the lighting fixtures have changed and they're made to look like fishing traps, which I really like that. Um, it has a nice feel to the restaurant. And then as you're walking into the restaurant, you'll see blue tile that eventually turns into brown tile. And that's supposed to be as if you were walking onto the island Kona, which I think is a really nice touch. And then basket weaving is really important to their culture. So all over the dining location, you can find different textures and styles that resemble uh, basket weaving, like the entrance, even the carpet is made to look that way. But I think my absolute favorite part is the ceiling. So they got a Polynesian tattoo artist to go ahead and design the ceiling and the different parts of the ceiling are really cool. I had a really nice cast member explain it all to me. The red parts are supposed to be like lava and then the blue moves into the ocean and there are white triangles that symbolize shark teeth. They have waves. Um, it's really, really nice. I love the detail they put into this and they had told me that they did this remodel to make it um, more respectful to the culture, which I love. And I just think that, you know, I was never here for the original, I never saw it. But I love this. I looked at pictures of the original version and I prefer this look a lot more. It just feels refreshing and beautiful. So the first thing I got is the hamachi tuna roll. It has hamachi, tuna, avocado, jalapeno, cilantro, and ponzu. I didn't get the jalapenos. I'm not a jalapeno girl. Um, and they go for about $21 here. Uh, it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that correct math? Um, rolls there, little sushi rolls. So we're gonna see if this is good. I love tuna, so let's do this thing. There's definitely a lot of cilantro. So if you don't like cilantro, don't get it. I love it, but the avocado, so good. My favorite part so far. I'll let you guys know what I think later, but so far it's really good. So I opted for the crispy pork vegetable pot stickers, which are $11. I expected to see pot stickers, and instead I saw a pizza. They just fried them together, so they technically are pot stickers, but they are together. I'm gonna cut one and see what it's like. Crispy, I can hear it as it's... I'm gonna get some of this sauce that's around the edge. Looks like pancakes here. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the most flavorful pot stickers I've ever eaten. The pork inside isn't like, doesn't make you weirded out. It chews nice, it's salty not just soy sauce salt there's flavor there of garlic maybe scallion and it's nice and crispy it's, it's done really well i have to see what the rest of the table thinks for an appetizer i went with the glazed chicken wings with sticky wing sauce 14 dollars. you get one two three four five six wings those 
black and white sesame seeds on top. Really pretty. And they are sticky. So sticky that I got two hot towels delivered to the table as well. I feel like I'm on an airplane or something and get the hot towel treatment. I don't know. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> These wings have been on the menu for years and I don't think they're going to ever go anywhere because they are just so, so delectable. They're extremely crispy. Uh, they are sweet, but at the same time, they have that saltiness from that teriyaki taste. Uh, they're just, they're really, really good. And I don't think they're ever going to go anywhere anytime soon. Okay, so for my entree, I got the rainbow poke bowl. It has tuna, salmon, shrimp, hamachi, lotus root, uh, Fresno chili peppers, and spicy ponzu. Uh, which I believe that has dairy in it, so it's not on my dish because of my dairy allergy, that sauce. But this looks really nice. Uh, I love the bowl that's in. Let's see, let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. I'm gonna get a nice one. That is good. And I think that the bottom has that lotus root, so good. And it has a nice kick to it. So if you don't do spicy, I would kind of stay away from this one, but I love a good kick and it goes really well with the fish, and the fish is super fresh. Super, super fresh. I'm excited to continue eating this. And just for you guys for you guys to know, uh, this does go for 24, and the other poke bowl is just tuna, and that goes for about 22. So just so you guys know, this has more fish, so it's 24. Just like the last review I was part of, I decided to let Patreon actually choose what I was going to have for my entree. And they decided uh, very well for me because it's what I would have ordered even if they didn't decide. And that is the pork belly noodle bowl. It is bone broth, rice noodles, soy, egg, mushrooms, bok choy, hot sesame oil, and obviously pork belly. And it is $24. The presentation on this is gorgeous and uh, it's a decent sized bowl of soup luckily it's uh you know we're inside so it's not super super uh not super hot out so i can actually enjoy this a little bit more this is going to be messy i apologize in advance but get a little noodle a little pork belly see how it goes i obviously have a lot more in this bowl to still try out with all the different vegetables the mushrooms the egg but the pork belly is really really nice it is just a little on the crispy side, but then still falls apart right in your mouth inside. The bone broth that I could taste from the noodles, just really flavorful, not overly salted, but is just, uh, it's gonna be a really nice soup. I just gotta start getting it all together. And obviously that's a little difficult, but right now on the first bite, I'm really liking it. Once again, surprised by presentation, I expected a stir-fry to be pieces of chicken. Instead, it was a chicken breast split in half, which was really hard to cut on this bowl. It kept wanting to... So I cut it, I pre-cut it for this bite. So I'm going to take a piece of chicken. I'm going to take... I don't know. Actually, hold on. Let me get some of the noodles first. Oh, and just to tell you exactly what it is. Kona stir-fry. You can get it with shrimp. You can get it with chicken, which is what I got, or with tofu. It's yakisoba noodles, napa cabbage, carrots, mushrooms, and teriyaki sauce. I'm going to get noodles. Again, it's going to... I'm going to look like a caveman. It's okay. I have to go deeper. My first impression is nothing special. That is a grilled chicken breast with nothing on it. The teriyaki sauce must be underneath the noodles. It's not on the chicken. The, the grilled chicken breast is grilled. Uh, maybe a little overcooked because it's tough and there's no flavor to it. The flavor is in the dish. I'll get back to you on how good it really ends up being. So just finished my meal and like I mentioned it's $24. Uh, the portion is small but I understand the pricing because fish is expensive and it's fresh fish. I would rate my meal at around a 7 out of 10. Um, the rice under the fish is where I was getting that spiciness from and it was good. It's a nice kick. But because I'm crazy, I would add spicy mayonnaise to it for that extra spice. Um, but I like it. Um, not my favorite thing I've ever had. Would I order again? Yes, I would. But I'm also tempted to try other things on the menu if I were to come back. But overall, I liked it. I'm full. I didn't hate it. 
Uh, but I did love the spiciness that came from this. It was a nice kick. Was it too, too much? But overall, a good meal, not a perfect meal. So seven out of 10. So I finished maybe half of it, actually less than half of the noodles, and I'm really disappointed. I like stir fry. I, I think I know what a stir fry is. I've cooked many a stir fry. That wasn't a stir fry. That was uh, ramen noodles with a very sweet teriyaki sauce that tasted like I was eating dessert. It was like just very, very sugar, syrupy, with a very overdone grilled chicken breast that was very weird to cut in a bowl. The amount of vegetables were, uh, they, there's mushrooms in here. I think I found a little sliver of one. So I eat carrots even. I found two circles of carrots. So yeah, I'm disappointed. I'm a fat guy that thought they were getting a stir fry and I didn't get a stir fry. So no, I wouldn't get this again. I'm, I'm disappointed in them. I feel like with my food, ultimately I fell somewhere in between Panda and Erica. Erica's look delicious. Uh, I definitely would come back for some poke here. Uh, Panda's, while it, looked kind of appealing it definitely also uh, was clearly not good the more he he dug into it and mine was just kind of middle of the road there were so many noodles in this bowl that like i i think it kept sucking up the broth and the noodles were cooking bigger and bigger so ultimately there wasn't a lot of broth in there for me and that was, that was kind of a disappointment uh, it was it was mixed the pork belly was crispy all the way through loved all of it the veggies really helped to add uh, a little texture to the entire bowl the another disappointment was the egg was really overcooked like when i'm having ramen or a noodle bowl i want the egg to be you know boiled like a soft boil not a hard boil and this was like full hard boiled egg chopped in half in there so i would have liked a nice runny egg in there so it was, there was good things about it. There were not so good things about it. I don't know if I would get it again. I've had it, I think I've had it here before. Who knows if it was for a review or not. It might have been, but I probably will be hesitant on getting this one again now because there's other things on the menu I would definitely try. But let's recap everything just real quick here uh, in terms of the price you know we did get three appetizers uh, we got that the um we got the 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 wings the uh the pot stickers and then the hamachi tuna roll we got for appetizers we had the ramen the pork ramen erica had poke and panda had the chicken stir fry uh, the stir fry was $24.50 in case Panda didn't mention it before. We're not quite sure on that, so mention it again. The total price for all of that was, I believe, $123.10. And after the uh, annual pass discount that we were able to get, 10% off, it was $110.71. Sense. And whether or not that means anything to you, I guess, is dependent. A lot of people for lunch, they're not going to come and have appetizers, a dessert, just maybe get that entree. So you probably walk out of here spending closer to like 25 bucks in the long run based on what the other options are in the menu. Uh, I thought the appetizers, of course, were solid. They were the best thing about this. And then entrees were mixed. So I, I will ultimately come back here for lunch again. I'll come back here for breakfast and dinner. It's a great spot here in Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. It's usually generally easy to get a reservation for. And yeah, it's a beautiful resort overall. So why not eat here? Especially if it's like, you know, during a time of the year where it's like New Year's Eve fireworks, 4th of July fireworks, grab a, grab a fast meal here and then go to the beach and watch some fireworks. It's all good. Uh, so I genuinely, I, I don't really know where we all stand on this. I think we'll all be back. Panda, would you come back? You'd come back. Erica, you'd come yeah. back. Okay, yeah. So we'd come back, but today, maybe not the best of the days. And that's going to do it for this Disney Dining Review. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you were watching this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave comments, questions, and video suggestions in the comment section. If you were listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen and leave us ratings and reviews when possible. And if you want to support us more, book a trip through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. We'll see you again next time we find a new place to eat here at Walt Disney World. Take care. Bye-bye.